welcome to you. I'm Hayley Palmer. It's so good to have you on tonight's show, especially as we are joined by Dancing on Ice professional Matt Evers. And here is what happened when I caught up with him. Matt, it's great to have you on the show. How are you? Oh, good morning from Los Angeles. Excuse the puffy eyes, but I am really good. It's good to be here. Can I just say, I didn't realise that it would be eight o'clock in the morning where you are. So thank you so much <laughs> for getting out of bed and coming to chat with us here on At Home with Hayley. I got out of bed. I set up my little studio. I did my hair for you. I put on a nice shirt. Like it's... I know. I've got to say, I'm liking the show. Oh, thank you. We're liking that on the show. Thank you so much uh, for being here. But uh, we're going to go straight into uh, your first song mm. choice. Uh, when I saw this, I thought, yes, we're going straight back to the 80s uh, Steve Winwood A Higher Love why this song what an iconic track uh, but for me I grew up on a farm so it reminds me yeah. of driving in an old probably like 1970 F Ford F-150 pickup truck that was totally rusted out but my aunt used to nanny so my cousin and I would go in the summer times we would when we were out of school we would go to the house where she would nanny and this song just reminds me of driving through the country roads, like with the summer sunshine, the windows down because the truck didn't have air conditioning. <laughs> and um, yeah, it just really takes me back to my childhood. Yeah, I love a song that you can just listen to and it just takes you straight back. And it's one of those, isn't it? And uh, I know there's a Kygo version of this, but I prefer yeah. the original. Don't you? I do. Um, I, I think because towards the latter part of the song, when it goes into the acapella and all it is, is just his voice and the background singers and just like people clapping. It just, I can remember, you know, being a young kid and, and thinking, wow, that's really cool. I had no idea what it was at the time. And, you know, coming into my adulthood and, and still, I mean, I play that track probably five or six times a week. It just is one of those tracks that picks you up. It, it, you know, you can reminisce, yeah. off, reminisce off of it as well. It's interesting, too, how music can bring back those memories. And they're so strong. I mean, I can well, smell the smells that, you yeah. know, were on those country roads. Um, I can feel yeah. the sunshine on my skin. It's it's pretty incredible. It's it's pretty, yeah, it's a really special track for me. Wow. Well, we can't wait to play that out for you. Uh, here it is. Uh, number 13 in 1986. I won a Grammy Award for Record of the Year. Definitely agree with that. Here's Steve Winwood. Hi, love. Now, I want to rewind that how everything started for you, because am I right in saying that before Dancing on Ice, you appeared in Broadway and the West End? So you've always been in entertainment, right? I, I did. I, yeah, I grew up in entertainment. I, as a kid, I was a commercial model for Target. I don't know if you've ever been to the States or if your viewers know what Target is, but it's a kind of a department store, a little bit like the higher end of Walmart. Um, right. So I had modeled for them as a kid. And had then that sort of led into more TV commercials. Um, and then through high school, growing up in a small town, I, you know, I probably shot a dozen, if not more commercials just for like some of the local brands and local stores. Um, and then when my competitive skating career sort of took off, uh, that took me away from television. So I was on the road with U.S. figure skating uh, for about eight years. And then when I quit skating at the age of 20, 21, I didn't know what I was going to do. God. It was like those crossroads yeah. moments where at the age of 20 years old, you're contemplating retirement, um, which, you know, not a lot of people go through at that age. Normally, your career is just getting started yeah. after, you know, your university or your high school degree. Right. Um, and the only thing that I kind of knew um, was skating and television. So at that point, um, I had been through kind of my first heartbreak. I was living in New York because um, my ex-girlfriend and I uh, had performed at Radio City Music Hall on Broadway wow. for the Christmas show, which was, I mean, that was just absolutely incredible. Like we performed for, I mean, some of the biggest names in the industry. Michael Jackson actually came to see us perform one night. What? Um, no way. So yeah, it was God. kind of this real crossroads of what do I do and where do I go and what do I want to do? And I knew that I wanted to stay within entertainment because I had always gotten a buzz off of it. And yeah. skating for me, competing in those performances, I, I got that same buzz. So yeah, going through that breakup and that heartbreak, um, I called everybody that I knew and one of my best friends, she was born and raised here in Los Angeles. And yeah, I just decided on a whim. I was like, I'm going to go to LA. Well, Why not? Yeah. Um, 
And on the four days that it takes to drive across the country, I called every single person that I knew. And I had had quite a few contacts within television due to the fact that skating at that point was televised quite a bit, a lot of the competitive events. Yeah. Um, and I landed a job at Fox Sports um, All right. just as a production runner. I also had worked with ABC Sports for a while, doing a lot of this sort of behind the scenes on the, the big skating events. Um, and then whilst I was here in LA, I got, a, you know, I got a modeling agent and I got a TV acting agent and a commercial agent. Cause out here you have to have an agent and a manager literally for everything. I mean, if you want to do your laundry, you have to get an agent. So it's, it's, um, <laughs> it's, it's a whole process, Amazing. but yeah, it was. So what was that point when Dance and Ice came along? Cause obviously we see it as a really successful show, but when it first started out, it was just a bit of a trial, wasn't it? It, it really was. I had been in Los Angeles for, um, I think, five years at that point. And the Screen Actors Guild, because I was working in the soaps at that point, I had a small role on um, a soap out here called General Hospital. And the Screen Actors Guild had gone on strike. And basically what that mean, or meant is that all of the productions had to shut down while the unions were working up the contracts with the producers and different things like that. So I was out of work and I was like, well, what am I going to do? I mean, I didn't want to collect unemployment. And so I went back to working in a bar, yeah. bartending in Venice Beach. God. And randomly one summer afternoon, I got a phone call from a producer um, at ITV to say, we heard, uh, well, we got your name from Christopher Dean. And I was like, wow, Christopher Dean, like how does Christopher <laughs> Dean have my name and number? Because I had I'd known of him, obviously, through my yeah. competitive skating, but I had never met him before. Um, and they had said, you know, we hear that you work in television and that you were an ice skater. Would you want to come to England for a couple of weeks and try out this show that we're, you know, we're putting together where we're teaching celebrities how to ice skate? And I was like, um, OK, I've never been to England before. It was kind of a no brainer for me because it no. was a perfect combination yeah. of everything that I've done in television, but also everything that I did yeah, on the ice. All came together. So it, I mean, didn't know what to expect. Um, the contract was only going to be for, I think, 12 weeks. And they sat us down before that first live show on January 9th, 2006 and said, if this doesn't work, you know, we'll pay your contract out for the rest of the time. But if it does, you know, we'll see what happens. And the ratings came back after that very first show. I was skating with Bonnie Langford that year. Um, and yeah. it was a smash hit. I, I mean, it was like 14 million viewers and 52% of the people in the country were watching us. And it was crazy. And the rest is history, say, literally. Yeah. yeah, I was going to say, because you're the longest serving dance and life professional. You've competed in every season since 2006. I mean, that is some achievement, right? It, you know, I love my job. I absolutely yeah, love my job. Tell. It is something that I think, again, I didn't know what to expect. It was just, I took the job on a whim um, because it combined both of my passions. But at the same token too, looking back, especially at this time of the year, because, you know, we finished the series back in March and now we're three, three or four months oh, post. Yeah. I look back at what we do with those celebrities, with those people, with those human beings. And it's incredible. I mean, I, the, the amount of money it that really my parents is. spent on my skating to get me to a certain level, but then to see Aww. what we do, yeah. you know, to see what so we proud. do with those celebs yeah. in a very, very, very short amount of time is next to a miracle. And I think through the past 14 series now, um, it is a true testament to when you put your mind to something and when you fully commit to something, you can achieve anything. So true. I believe that. You, and, you know, it's brilliant for us as viewers to watch, you know, people on that journey when mm. they literally can't skate and then you see them kind of doing <laughs> the headbanger and everything. You're just like, that, that is incredible, you know, for you guys and for us as viewers. You know, it's a real journey. So um, a big dance and a nice fan here. Well, we're going to go into oh. your next song, uh, J.P. Cooper, September Song. Uh, I listened to this earlier. It just never gets old. Why this it one, doesn't. Matt? It just, again, I think it's one of those songs that just brings back some pretty cool memories. This was... Um, I think this was the early 2000s and it was kind of the first couple of years that I was here in LA and I was doing my thing and I was auditioning and literally knocking on everybody's doors for, you know, to get a job. Um, and yeah. it was those little moments when, you know, you land an audition and then you get the call back and then you get the phone call that, oh my God, you got the job. And it's all of that hard work leading up to that job. I've always said too, like within the entertainment yeah. industry, the auditions, 
and the, the daily grind of what we go through, that's the work. But when you land that job, that's when you actually get to enjoy the process. And that's when you get to play. And this song just reminds me of some of those, you know, those testing and trying times of driving everywhere in LA to all these different auditions. Yeah. But the song, you know, <laughs> has it has a good memory somewhere in my head. Yeah, well, I think that's a really important lesson for everyone to learn because we see you and we think, oh, wow, dance a nice professional, but we don't see all the hard work that goes into it. And like you say, all the auditions and all the highs and all mm-hmm. the lows. So, um, I mean, I didn't know that about you. So that's really interesting to hear, Matt. Well, we're going to play out a uh, September song, uh, peaked at number seven on the UK singles charts in 2016. Enjoy and we'll see you I after. Know, as strong as a lion, soft as the cuts and you lion. Times we got hot like and some questions from some of our viewers, Matt. Sammy would like to know uh, how far in advance you gear up for Dance on the Ice? Because obviously we see you in January, but I mean, all year long, are you kind of like eating McDonald's and just chilling out or are you on a strict regime? <laughs> I wish. I wish I could eat McDonald's all year on. Um, no, I, yeah, it, through, the, through the course of, you know, the 15 years that I've been on the show now, my body has changed a lot. Obviously, I'm getting older are, and things things change. Um, back in the early days, I could do whatever I wanted sort of all year round. Um, I was pretty strict with my diet anyway, just because really? I do like to eat well. Um, you know, I, I do notice that when I eat crap, I feel like crap. Oh, um, that's me, however, Matt, I just can't I, help it. Pizza, <laughs> yeah. delivery, Nando's, it's all going wrong. I mean, after a couple of cocktails in the bar and then on your way home, uh, maybe a cheeky Nando's, you know. Not this. Always. <laughs> kids, I, I have to say, Nando's is not bad. You know, if, the, if you order... It's not that bad. There's worse places you could go, There right? is a lot worse places, yes. Um, but no, I think where I'm at right now in my life, you know, we're in production. I get to England the, the middle of October um, to start training the celebs and then we train them for a couple of months before you see us when we go live in January and then we're live from January until oh, March. Okay. Yeah. Um, at this point in my career, I, I normally take uh, April and May off. Like I let my body relax. I let my body rest um, to sort of recover from the intensity of what dancing and ice is. Of course. Yeah. Uh, so where I'm at right now is I'm slowly starting to get back in shape, um, you know, which then you're talking June, July, August, September. It's, you know, four or five months of prepping myself for for what the series has to has to bring, because we just don't know, you know. And what's that? Is it gym? Is it gym it's in the morning, lot. gym in the evening? Like, what's the uh, regime? For me, that's a good question. People have different, you know, times of the day that they like to work out. If I don't get up in the morning and get active immediately, I will sit on that couch and Netflix all day long. Yes. So it's, I have to, <laughs> I, I have to, to be pretty strict. And when I get up, it's the last thing that I want to do, but I know that it, I have to do it. It's part of my job is to keep my body. Doesn't it, it does. set the day up? I used to do it in the evening, but now I'm like, first thing yeah. up I get straight in the swimming pool. And then, it, you know, you're starving hungry and it kickstarts yeah. the day. I feel like we're having a motivational uh, show now. It's true. <laughs> I mean, I think for me, I, and I, I really vary my exercises. Like I love to walk. So I'll go down to the beach and I'll try and do, you know, 10 to 15,000 steps, which, you know, only takes a, at the most probably two hours. Um, to just walk the beach. But then as well, I do a lot of spin classes. I do a lot of like hit uh, stuff. And then I have a super cheap gym that I use whenever I need to. So it's, I kind of vary it all up because I do, I get bored really easy. Me too. Well, I'm feeling very guilty uh, just sitting here now after that talk. But anyway, <laughs> we're just sat on the couch. Uh, moving on, we're going to go into a Rita Ora, Let You Love Me. Uh, why this song? I think it's one of her best actually from uh, Rita Ora. Uh, but what's the reason behind I, this one, Matt? It really is. I think it's one of her best tracks as well. I think too, I became a fan of hers when she played Dancing on Ice a couple of years ago. Um, And her vibe, she just, I don't know, there's just something about her. And I think that she doesn't get enough credit for a lot of her music. Um, This track to me just is, again, it's one of those that when it comes on in the car, I mean, I blow my speakers out. I'm sure people driving past, you know, and and the car (laughs) next to me can hear me singing on top of it. But um, Yeah, she just is, I don't know, it's just something, she's a little bit of a sort of an underdog, I think, in the music industry, and I really like to support people like that, and this track for me is just, it's brilliant. It really is. Well, uh, we're going to play out right on the show now, uh, number four in 2018, and her her 13th song even, to reach the top ten. Enjoy, and we'll see you in just a couple of minutes. Every time it gets too real, and every time I feel I sabotage it. 
more questions from some of our lovely viewers. Uh, Jan would like to know if you could skate with anyone, who would it be? I get this question question. all the time. It's a great question. I mean, I think, you know, if we're talking about like celebrities or different things like that, like I want to be friends with Pink. Oh, yeah. So I would want to skate with Pink. And plus, if you've not seen her latest documentary, you must go see it. She's the ultimate daredevil. So she she has zero fear because they basically they um uh they go behind the scenes of her tour before COVID and it's shot pretty much all at Wembley, um and it's it's absolutely brilliant just to see what she goes through on a daily basis. Obviously, like I've toured with Dancing on Ice and things like that, and our our tour is nothing compared to her her tour. But I think if we we're talking celebrities, I definitely would want to would want to teach Pink how to skate. Um, but on a more personal note, I would love to um, skate with my mom. I lost my mom when I was 17 years old um, and she really never got to see the fruits of my labor growing up as a competitive skater. Um, so yeah. if I could skate with anybody, it would have to be her. Oh, I love that answer. Mm. Oh dear. So if I can keep going now. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Into the next one. Um, Melissa would like to know uh, if you weren't a skating pro, what would you do for a job? Great question. Um, again, it's a little bit like my music taste, which is kind of all over the shop. I think there's a couple of big things that I'd want to do. Number one would be a meteorologist, present the weather. Um, I'm a weather freak. And I'm also like a geography freak. When I was a kid, I would watch the news just for the weather. Like I didn't watch cartoons as a kid. So I think I would work within the news industry um, or journalism um, with a a specialization on meteorology. Because I think, too, growing up in the Midwest, in northern Minnesota, where we have weather extremes in the wintertime, we'll have 12 feet of snow. Uh, In the summertime, it can be, you know, 45 degrees. Yeah. Um, and also we get tornadoes and I've been through a couple of tornadoes in my life. And I think when you experience mother nature like that, it, it it's fascinating. And for me as a kid, um, I wanted to know and learn yeah. everything about what, um, weather forecasting was all about. So I'd probably have to say my number one pick would be, would be uh, a meteorologist. Good answer. And uh, Faye would like to know what has been your proudest moment of your career? Is there something there where you just go, do you know what, that, you know, I can really pinpoint that moment. I think every year that I step out on Dancing on Ice in January um, is my proudest moment because I made it another yeah, year. Yes. <laughs> like it's, it's just something that I, I pinch myself every single time that I get on the ice, especially when Torval and Dean are out there. Um, uh, that feeling for me, thankfully has never gotten old and to become friends with your heroes, to be able to work with them and uh, call them up. If you have a life issue, you know, like it, they're just two incredible people. And I think for me, every time I'm, I'm on the ice with them, um, is yeah, is a, I, I feel extremely proud. Yeah. Just incredible. We're going to go into the next song, A Good Life, uh, One Republic. Uh, Again, taking us back to the old days and great memories. Why this song, Matt? Oh, my gosh. First off, I am the biggest fan of Ryan Tedder. Like, (laughs) I don't know what it... I mean, granted, he's a beautiful man and he's got a beautiful voice. And he is an absolute musical genius. This song, for me, talks about traveling. Um, You know, he talks about being in Colorado, being kind of all over the United States um, and the world. And at that point in my life, I was living between London. I was traveling to to Paris. I was um, I had another place in Colorado um, that I was staying with some family. And then here in L.A., it just was this it just felt like the song was sort of written for me at that point. And it was I think I had been a fan of of One Republic previous to this song, but this song really made me fall in love with the band and the one. sort of become yeah. a proper fanatic. Yeah. Well, we're going to check out the video uh, taken from One Republic's second studio album, uh, Waking Up in 2009. Check this out. Woke up in London yesterday. Then we have got a quick fire question round for you, Matt. To keep oh, you on your toes this morning. It's How early. are you feeling about that? Um, it's early, oh, God, so, so I don't, <laughs> my brain's not working quite. <laughs> Too full okay, good yet. luck. Here we go. <laughs> First song that you ever purchased. Oh, gosh. Um, the hilarious. So I didn't purchase it myself. But my okay. mom actually got me the tape. Love a tape. And it was, I, 
what, shoot, what was it? I had asked her for the Backstreet Boys. Oh. But she got me something else that was like, I don't can't remember what it was called, but it wasn't Backstreet Boys. It, it wasn't was Backstreet like, Boys. Okay. It was like some random band that had like back <laughs> and boys in it. I did. Oh. I shoot. I need to oh. actually ask her about that, but it it was completely oh. wrong. But it was it was one of the Backstreet Boys's. Something first. like the Backstreet Boys. We'll take that as your answer. Yes. Uh, best movie that you've ever seen. What's your go-to movie? Oh gosh. Um. I have so many. <laughs> I have to be honest, like, that. if I, if it's, if I'm sat on the plane, it's got to be Moana. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, you just gone right up in my estimations. Yes, that's a good choice. I'm I with mean, you on that. I just love animation. Yes, <clears throat> yes, love it. And a song that you love playing full blast in your car. I know you did say Rita Ora earlier. Uh, any other tunes that you like to cruise down the motorway to? Anything from Kygo. Anything like his yeah. higher love, his remake, like, and the history behind that track that he found that, you know, it was from Whitney Houston, um, in, from Japan and she randomly sang it and somebody randomly hit record on just her audio and then he found it. Like, it's just brilliant. Yeah. Absolutely. The story behind Genius. that song is just incredible. Yeah. And go to food when you're absolutely starving. Sorry to bring it back to food again. Um, what's the thing that you love the most? Chips and salsa. I <laughs> yes. have an addiction. You're speaking my language. <laughs> yeah. I have an addiction to chips and salsa. <laughs> He's admitted it here on the show. Love that. <laughs> and uh, best piece of advice that uh, you've ever been given? Is there something that's always stuck with you, Matt? Um, I mean, I think it's just the harder you work, the bigger the reward. Through a lot of my skating coaches. It's so true. Um, and also, my grandfather had always said, embrace the struggle. Um, you know, and I think the, the past, from what we've all gone through for the past year and a half, that just, his voice just rings through in my head on a daily basis when, you know, I'm feeling down or I'm feeling oh. overwhelmed or, you know, whatever. We just have to sort of embrace it because when you can embrace it, um, is when you can relax. I, I know it sounds weird, but it's, it's kind of a mindset that I, I live by. Yeah, that's so true, actually, because I felt that in lockdown because it was such a shock, I think, to everyone, whatever mm. industry you were in or whoever you were. And uh, I felt really flat days and I had to kind of really train my mindset and, uh, yeah. you know, train it every day, which I think is something that we've all learned, isn't it? Absolutely. And I think, too, the knowledge of the fact that the entire world had shut down was, to me, quite comforting um, because we were all yes. going through the same thing. So I didn't feel like I was the only one out there feeling like this yeah yeah no i'm totally with you on that well we're going to go into your next song choice i don't want to wait uh by paula cole it's a beautiful song isn't it mm. yeah again it just hits on my random music list that i have you know my spotify playlist other playlists are available i'm sure but this song takes me back to when i first moved to la ali mcbeal the television show you know, this was before yeah. the days of um, digital recording or catch up or Netflix or any of those. And the good, the old, good days. old days. And <laughs> it was an event, you know, that that Ally McBeal was yeah. so iconic with, um, you know, the television series uh, that we would I'd wait all week for I think it was on here on like a Monday night oh. and we'd have everybody over to the house. You know, we'd all eat together together. And we'd all watch the show together. And so, you know, this Aww. was the title track from from the series. So it it just brings me back to yeah. the early 2000s. <laughs> Aww, again, we keep reminiscing, but it's so true, isn't it? When you used to sit around and <clears throat> wait for a show and have dinner all together. You know, I miss yeah, those I mean, days. Uh, but anyway, we're going to play out the song for you, Matt. Enjoy. So open up your morning light. Say a little prayer for I'm going to go into your last song choice, Matt. Um, I must admit, I hadn't actually heard of uh, this guy. I looked him up and I was like, drop dead gorgeous. This right? could definitely be our last song. John McLachlan, <laughs> uh, beating my heart. How fit is he? He is one of the most beautiful men on the planet. That's all I got to say. And that's probably how I came on to him, like, or found his music. Oh. That he, I think I was... I was watching a music show. I mean, this was quite a few years ago and I was like, dang, who is that? And then the, heard the music and I'm like, okay, can get into this. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's, his, his first two albums, I think, 
um, probably had the most like sales or traffic or whatever. Um, and then he hasn't done, he's, he's still doing music at the minute, but they just, they're not getting the traffic that he had previously. Um, but I've sort of followed his career for the past 10 to 15 years and it's, yeah, it's just, some of his stuff is just incredible. Well, I'm definitely going to be following him now. So thanks for that little tip. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> little eye candy. <laughs> We're going to be uh, very excited to play this out for you all on the show. Uh, but Matt, it's been so lovely uh, to literally take a trip down memory lane with you. I feel like we've, you know, taken a little uh, walk down memory lane and we um, talked about chips a lot, which has been lovely. Yep. Um, so now I'm hungry. I'm going to go and make some of those. Uh, but no, thank you so much. And we can't wait for Dance on the Ice to come back again. I love it. Yeah, with fingers crossed. Um, so far, so good. You know, in this environment and in this world right now, we don't know what's happening tomorrow. But... <laughs> At the minute, we are on schedule for a January arrival of another series of Dancing on Ice. Woo! Amazing. Well, thank you so much. It's been so thank lovely. Thank you. It's Matt Evers, everyone. Thank you. Woo! Huge thank you to the lovely Matt Evers for being such an incredible guest on tonight's show. A real joy. And thank you to you at home for supporting the show. It's very much appreciated. Thank you. Now, I will see you same time, same place next week. Be- Oh, I'm good.